Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Calculus BC. In today's episode, we will be discussing an introduction to polar coordinates. And we're going to begin the lesson with a comparison between rectangular versus polar coordinates. And so we've dealt actually in the calculus world exclusively in rectangular coordinates, and you guys know these very well. Uh, we, always, we always describe rectangular coordinates as x comma y, where the x is the, is the left or right movement of the coordinate. The y coordinate is the up or down part of the coordinate. And so if I was to give us a coordinate, say, like 3 comma 4, we could easily interpret that as to the right by 3 and up by 4. So if, you're, if you've ever played like Battleship or anything like that, it's very much similar to how this goes. Uh, you know, you go to the right by 3, you go up by 4. Similarly, if I was to switch colors here and give us a coordinate of negative 2 comma negative 1, I would go to the left by 2 and down by 1, and that would be where the coordinate goes. It's important to know the roles of each piece in the rectangular coordinate system, where the negative 2 is the x, and we know that based on our comparison here. The negative 2 is the input of the function, and the negative 1 is the output of the function. So in this particular function, whatever this function may be, uh, for the red, I input a negative 2 into the machine. The machine then pops out a negative 1 for me. And so that is how rectangular coordinates work. Now again, we know that very, very well. And um, the, the thing with rectangular coordinates is that, is that it really does allow for good up, down, and left, right movement. And so the difference is here is with polar coordinates, what we have instead of x comma y is we have r comma theta. And this is where things kind of take a little bit of a, uh, of a major departure. When it comes to uh, when it comes to the differences between the planes, R is standing for the radius of the function, whatever that function may be. The theta is the angle, the angle that 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 is created. And so, one of the key differences, one of the really main differences that that people can get confused with, is when it comes to input versus output. In polar coordinates, it's actually reversed. You input the angle first, and then you output the radius after the fact. So in this case, you read polar coordinates right to left versus rectangular coordinates you read from left to right. And so what happens is, if I give us an example here, I will go ahead and give us an example of a rectangular, or rather a polar coordinate of, say, of say 4 comma 2 pi over 3 what this is telling me is it's telling me to go it's telling me to go to twist at an angle of 2 pi over 3 and then go out 4 radii so normally in rectangular coordinates we have we usually have them as grids that look like this they 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 look like they look like this and I think, yes, this, I, I recently upgraded the program, which will allow me to draw straight lines. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually holding down the shift button right now. And so, yeah, so I have these, I have these grid lines right here, which, which allow me to see the coordinate planes very well. This dot here is to the right by three of these grid lines and up four of the grid lines. The way we display polar coordinates, because we're dealing in radii, is one unit is indicated by a small circle because that would be one radii, radius long, two radii long, three radii long, and four radii long. Now, unfortunately, this upgraded version of the program does not allow me to draw uh, full circles in, in perfect order, but I think we kind of get the idea. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist at an angle of 2 pi over 3. So just like the unit circle, we always assume that our character, and in fact, you can't see him because purple and blue... Um, I'll go ahead and draw him in yellow. Um, the person will be facing this way. He faces this way. So like the unit circle, he's going to twist. He's going to twist to, four, to 2 pi over 3 radians, which is about right here. And then he'll go out 4 radii, like this. And that is the coordinate 4, 2 pi over 3. 
So from here, the differences between polar and rectangular coordinates have to deal with its motion. So if you look at rectangular coordinates, rectangular coordinates almost behave like a bird's eye view of the function where you're looking down and you're moving just top, bottom, left, and right. And while that can create curved movement, those are all a summation of individual coordinates that just kind of create a curvature of the shape. Polar coordinates, on the other hand, what they do is it's almost like you're, you're playing it from the, over the shoulder of the person's perspective. And when that person wants to move somewhere, they will turn and look at the, at, the, at the angle, at the thing that they want to move towards, and then move towards the thing that they are looking at. So the reason why polar coordinates do that is because what's going to... One of the consequences of polar coordinates behaving this way is it's, it gives you the ability to create functions that you wouldn't otherwise be able to see using rectangular coordinates, and we will see that in a future video. So from here, let's go and do a couple more cord, uh, polar coordinate examples. I'm going to go and clear off the board here. And so from here, I will go and graph a few more. So I will say, I will say, two comma three pi over four. I will do negative three comma pi, and I will do negative four comma negative pi over four. So what do these look like? Well, remember, and I keep forgetting that I actually have the ability to draw something straight now. Check that out. Isn't that cool? That's cool. Didn't say it would be flat, though. Excellent. Okay, so from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and look at where I'm facing. So first, remember, I'm always facing this way. I'm always facing towards zero radians, right, just like on the unit circle. I'm being asked to twist into 3 pi over 4. Well, 3 pi over 4 is in quadrant 2. It's right here. 3 pi over 2 is right here. And so I'm, I'm twisting this way, and then my radius is 2. So I'm going to be asked to go out two circles, two circles wide. So here we go. This is it. This is the coordinate, 2 comma 3 pi over 4. When it comes to the next example here, and if you want to, you can go and pause and take a second and think about what you believe this graph is going to do. One thing to note is that the, is that the radius is negative. And so again, the angle is easy. He's telling us to twist pi radians. So it looks like I'm going to go right here. My, my landing spot is going to be here. But the way I'm going to move, notice how my radius is negative. Well, if I go ahead and draw three circles around this thing, because it's definitely going out three, the negative is telling me that because I am, because I'm facing, I'm going to draw him a different color here, because I'm facing this way now, since my radius is negative three, I'm actually going to go back three spaces right here. This is where negative three comma pi is going to be. So what I'll often say is that when it comes to a positive radius, when it comes to a positive radius, I will call him an advancing radius. A negative radius, I will often call a retreating, a retreating radius. So oftentimes I will ask, are we advancing or are we, or are we retreating? That will all depend on the positivity or the negativity of said radius. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, the last example here has a negative angle and a negative and a, and a retreating radius, so we can, I think we can kind of see where that's going to come from. So I'll go ahead and uh, speed this one up a little bit. There are going to be four radii in total with this thing. So there is our fourth radius. So again, we're going negative pi over four. What this tells me is this tells me that we are going clockwise twist, clock, uh, clockwise rotation. And then this is retreating. And so from here, I'm going to go down to negative pi over 4, which is facing this way. But I'm going to actually retreat to negative 4. And that's where that is. So from here, I'm hoping you guys can start to realize there are very, very many different ways to represent the same polar coordinate. Because this guy here, we actually graphed him almost a little while ago except the radius was a little bit shorter. So I'm hoping you can realize that this 
radius here, the, in this last example, this negative 4 comma pi over, uh, negative pi over 4, he can also be written as positive 4 comma 3 pi over 4. Those are the same terminal position, making them the same coordinate. Okay, so I'm hoping that makes sense. Let's move on to some conversion. I'll clean up the board real quick. Give me a second. All right, now that we're back, let's go ahead and convert some rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates. So how do we do this? I'm going to give us a coordinate that's going to be 2 rad 3 comma negative 2. And we're going to convert that into some version of polar. So from here, it's important to know the relationship, again, between the polar and the rectangular style coordinate. Remember, this is x and this is y. And at the end of the day, we're going to have to convert that into an r comma theta. Now again, remember, r is the radius and theta is the angle. So if I can find out these two pieces of information, then I will obviously be solid on this. So how do I, do, how do I begin this problem? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and plot this these points on the coordinate plane. Now 2 rad 3, that's kind of hard to figure out because it's, it's an irrational number, but it's okay. You know, I just need to go to the right by a certain amount and then down by a certain amount. So from here, this is going to be where I place my coordinate here. 2 comma rad 3, uh, 2 rad 3, negative 2. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and extend from the origin a line out like this. And I think you guys might be able to see where this is going. What I've done is I've created a right triangle here that extends out 2 rad 3 and extends down negative 2. So how does that help me? Well, remember, the radius is the hypotenuse of this right triangle right here. So if you guys can imagine, I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem to find out said radius. So it's going to be 2 rad 3 squared plus negative 2 squared equals r squared. And then this is going to be 12 plus 4 equals r squared. Scroll down a little bit. Uh, doing a little bit of mental math here, r should equal 4. So I know that my coordinates are 4 comma something in my polar form. Now how do we find out this angle? This is going to be a little bit more in depth, but I think we can all handle it. Well remember the angle, the angle is the, is the angular distance between the x-axis and the hypotenuse. So that's what that is. And remember, this angular formation from integrated 2 cr is created by a change in the y over a change in the x. That's what, that is what's created this hypotenuse here. So we learned in integrated 2 that y over x created an angle. And the trigonometric relationship that connects the y to the x in that way is tangent. And so in the context of this problem, then tangent of theta would be negative 2 over 2 rad 3. Those guys will then cancel, giving you negative 1 over rad 3. And so from here, theta will be tan inverse of negative 1 over rad 3. So from here, we're back to our good old buddy inverse trig. So I need to figure out the angle that creates the side ratio of negative 1 over rad 3 for tangent. Well, remember, it's negative, which places us in quadrant 4. And the angle that does that is going to be the pi over 6 that is in quadrant 4, which is negative pi over 6. So big takeaways from this example here. To find the radius, to find the radius, it's always the Pythagorean theorem. So this is the first relationship that we need to know when it comes to converting from rectangular to polar. So this is how we get r. How we get theta is, whoops, it's not that. It's one step further than that. It's theta equals tan inverse of y over x. And this is how you get theta. So whenever you are being asked to convert from rectangular back to polar, know these two relationships, Pythagorean and inverse tangent. Let's go and do another example real quick here. Let's go and do them over here. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and do another conversion. So let's go ahead and do negative 3, comma 4. 
and we'll go and convert that into r comma theta. So again, I'll go ahead and just draw out this coordinate here. So negative 3, 4 is going to be in quadrant 2. And then I will go ahead and draw my right triangle here, giving me negative 3 here, 4 here. What that does is that this actually puts me in a really solid position to find the radius. If you know your Pythagorean triples, it will just be 5. It's the theta that's going to be a little bit more troublesome. Now for that, I would encourage us to use a calculator for this thing. So from here, what you're going to get is you're going to get tan inverse of negative, oops, not negative, well, it can be, doesn't matter, 4 over negative 3. And if you just put that in the calculator, you should get, and I don't have enough space, but negative 0 0.9272. So there you have it. That is the conversion between rectangular to polar. Let's go ahead and go from polar back to rectangular. All right, so in order to understand the gist of converting from a polar graph or a polar coordinate to a rectangular coordinate, again, we have to go back to just kind of a generalization of what the relationships are. I'll go and just throw it on a theta right here. I'll call them x, y, and r. If I was to say take cosine of theta, that would be x over r. If I was to take sine of theta, that would be y over r. And by multiplying r on either side, I can then conclude that my x coordinate, and I'll go ahead and change colors for him, my x coordinate would then be r times cos theta. My y coordinate would be r times sine theta. And this is probably the biggest uh, relationship that you need to know in order, for, in order for you to convert from polar back to rectangular. So if I give to you a polar coordinate, and I, I, I think that converting from polar back to rectangular is often easier, uh, 4 comma 2 pi over 3. Well, we already have r here and we already have theta. So we can just plug those into this little formula here. So we can say that x is equal to 4 times cosine of 2 pi over 3. And then y is equal to 4 times sine of 2 pi over 3. And here we are back at the unit circle. So this is 4 times cosine of 2 pi over 3 would be negative 1 half. So that gives us negative 2. And then 4 sine of 2 pi over 3 is going to be rad 3 over 2, giving us 2 rad 3. So these are our coordinates here, negative 2 comma 2 rad 3. Pretty simple when it comes to converting polar to rectangular. As long as you know the as long as you know the relationship. And I think that will pretty much wrap it up for this episode. So as always, please leave comments or questions in the comments area, and I will see you next time.